Hi, I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me today. Let's see what kind of question we have. Get my glasses on. Ooh, the last three. We're working our way down. See if we can't help somebody out. Mike from North Adams, Massachusetts writes, Hi, Paul. I understand it takes people of rare brilliance and insight to develop and produce a truly musical power amplifier. I think that's probably right, especially someone like Bascom King. This seems to be borne out by the nearly hero status of some designers. What is it about power amps that is so inherently difficult for engineers to wrap their heads around? Ooh, that's a good question. Power amps are some of the most under appreciated products in audio. And I'm, I'm impressed that Mike figured that out. You look at legendary designers like Nelson Pass. Nelson, uh, one of my heroes from Pass Labs and Threshold, Bascom King, oh gosh. I, I, there's any number of designers of power amplifiers that uh, are or sort of hero status in, in my mind. And, you know, I've designed a fair number of them myself. I wouldn't say I've ever attained any of that kind of status. But what I can tell you is that power amps are underappreciated. And here's why. Power amps sit in the listening room, in a rack, somewhere that is kind of out of the way. They have no user interface. Some of the Macintoshes have meters you know, that about as useless as tits on a bull, but they're cool to look at, <laughs> totally cool to look at, and, and I like them, but th they generally are not interfaced with by people. And so when we get an itch to have some of the latest technology, power amps are the place, the last place we go to, but really it should be one, some of the first place because Power amplifiers play such a critical role and they are so difficult to get right because the challenge that they face is really tough. So imagine you have the output of a preamplifier. So you've gone from your source through your preamp and now you have this signal that's ready to go. And it's, I, I, I hesitate to use my fingers with this because it's, it's, we just have a small signal that is really hard for you to wrap your head around. But this small signal, let's call it a volt, maybe two volts. It needs to get about 30 times bigger, really a lot bigger than it was in the first place. So we're looking at 30, 40 volts that it needs to get to. And as a reminder, what comes out of the wall is 120 volts. So we're a third as much as what comes out of the wall. So we're talking fairly big voltages. More than just voltage, we now have to take that high voltage and translate it into wattage. And that's a very difficult challenge. If you look at a source or a preamplifier, let's just take a preamp. You've got a small signal on the input because they have maybe 20 dB of gain, which is about 10 times the, the voltage gain. So one volt in, you get 10 volts out, right? So 100 millivolts in, you get one volt out, etc. But what comes in is the same as what comes out. Voltage in, voltage out. It's hard. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that preamps are not difficult to design. They, they too are a challenge. But in a power amplifier, you've got basically a preamp in the input, which is a voltage gain stage that will take about 30 dB uh, of gain or 30 times whatever you put in and raises that voltage and then you've got to take that and convert it to watts and there we're taking one form of voltage and adding current capability to it and trying to do all of that in a way that has low distortion that is not bothered by the complex reactions of some loudspeakers, and I'll talk about that in a second, and we have to have extremely low output impedance. Now, to do all of that without upsetting the voltage gain stage and doing so in a way that sounds great is really an art.
one of the problems that we face is that very few loudspeakers are a constant, consistent impedance. Loudspeakers are all over the map. They're, they Maybe their nominal impedance is 4 ohms, but they go up high and they dip down low. Heck, Arnie Nudell, who designed Infinity loudspeakers for years, made a system called the Kappas. And the Kappas were the bane of every amplifier designer I can think of, including myself and Stan. Kappa, Kappa was it nines? Anyway, the Kappa series went down to half an ohm. And that's important because when you dip down that low, the power amplifier is going to grunt and try and produce that, or it's going to blow a fuse because it's trying to put out too much power, or it's going to go up in a ball of flame. And that happened quite a bit. So it's, it's tough. It really is difficult. And the, the art of this is to perform a voltage conversion to current all in the same box with a big giant power supply and keep the voltage gain stage from sounding poor and not using too much feedback and the current stage producing enough wattage without drawing the power supply up and down. Oh, it's, it is, I think, in my opinion, probably the most difficult of all the challenges in engineering that we as high-end designers face. It's really tough. And that was a great question. I mean, I could go on forever, but I promise to keep these videos short. I hope that shed some light onto the issues that you had asked about. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.